everybody, this is Jennifer from Gentle Soaps, and I'm here to show you how to make uh, liquid soap. Now this is step two. This is three days after I've made my uh, cold process uh, soap. And uh, so let's have a look here at what's going on in the bowl. And um, I did find that I had to stir it down. So you have to keep an eye on your soap. If it starts to separate, just mix it back up. Um, if you've got a handy dandy uh, immersion blender, that works great. Um, I just wanted to show you how clear it is. This has got air bubbles in it because I've mixed it again after it got hard and gel. But the whole thing was a complete gel, like that, that piece right there. You see that big piece? It was all completely clear with a very, very thin layer of oil on top. Mixed it back in. It's still got some time to um, continue to saponify. And we're going to do a pH test using phenolphthalein. And I'm going to show you, um, we're also going to do a clarity test. So the first is the clarity test. And if you look right here, it's getting pretty clear. All right. And I mixed this up a couple of days ago so I could see without air bubbles what it'll look like. Now this morning, I put a few... I put, I put a teaspoon of my base over here into this with some water, about two parts um, water to one part soap. And, you know, I get a thick, creamy whip here, which makes me think of, you know, body whip and stuff. So maybe we'll be doing some, some whipped soap and we'll see how the bubbles hold in it. Um, if it holds, that would be really cool to not have to buy uh, a body whip base to have your own that you can make at home. So if I, if that works with that, we'll, we'll continue working on that. Um, but right now it's just full of air bubbles and it should settle. Um, and we'll, next time we look, we'll have a look at this and see what it looks like. Um, so now we're going to do the pH test. Now you can use um, strips of pH strips that you can buy um, in your local store. I'm just going to put on some gloves because I've already tested this, so I know it's not ready. But I wanted to show you guys how it's done anyway and then give you a baseline for which to compare it, compare it with because working with um, phenolphthalein is so much easier than trying to match up a color on your pH chart. Um, so I've got some soap here that I made. This is my um, Christmas in Victoria soap. Isn't it beautiful? I love this. It's just an end piece. Somebody special to me is going to get. It's got flowers. Anyway, I digress. So there is our baseline. That's going to um, show us whether or not it's ready to compare it with the other. So here's one that I mixed up with water. And it doesn't matter if you use this or if you use it right out of your bucket. So I'm going to do both. So there's one out of there. I'm just scoop a little bit out of there and I'm just going to wipe my hands and use the phenolphthalein. Now the phenolphthalein, I had to import it in from China, believe it or not. I had a really hard time getting a hold of my lab supplies because I work from home. If you're having that problem, send me an email. I can um, get you a bottle of it. I think I might even put it in my Etsy shop just because it's um, kind of hard to get sometimes uh, here in Canada. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to get yourself some, a hand on some of this. And it's not very expensive. Uh, the more expensive, most expensive part is the bottle. And isn't it cute? Isn't it a cute little bottle? All right. So here we go, um, with the fetal failing test. So I'm going to put a couple drops on there and look at that. It's pink. That's not a good sign. Put it on this one. Well, it looks like it's going to be okay. Huh? I wonder why that happened. No. No, watch it, watch it. It's also turning pink. It's gonna get pinker as it sits there. Oh, lost ya, there we go. So you can see it's very evident on the one that we've whipped up with a little bit of water. And now you can see that it's turning pink here. Now let's put it on this bar of soap I made uh, a few weeks ago. And we'll let it wait, we'll let it wait, we'll let it wait, nothing. So this is perfectly safe to use. <clears throat> it's also been super fatted. That's one really good reason to super fat your soap. Um, liquid soap, on the other hand, we want clarity. And so we're trying to get away from um, having uh, free fats in our formulas. So it will take longer, but as soon as you've got a clear reading, you'll know that your soap is fine. You can also do things to adjust the pH. You can add things like citric acid, perhaps. Um, but you need to make sure that your soap is within 
uh, under 10 in your pH because any higher and you're going to be burning and you're going to be um, causing irritation in your um, customer skin, which none of us want because, you know, that's, you know, lawsuit stuff. So, um, again, the clarity is coming along. The pH is too high. Um, and if you want to get some of this, just let me know. All right, so until next time, uh, click like and subscribe. If you want to learn more about soap making and beauty crafting, uh, we've got a lot of really exciting things coming up. And uh, bubble wands will be released soon. The recipe, I've decided to, um, to do a special release on that. So wait for that on December 1st. All right, so until next time, this is Jen from Gentle Soap signing off.